Hey everybody, Dave here again, and I've got a super exciting video for you because uh, I'm going to go ahead and share an application with you in my GitHub so that you'll be able to download this, play along, and expand on this application to do some pretty remarkable things on your own. So what I'm uh, hoping that you'll get from this is all sorts of creative ideas. I am giving you one application, and this application is essentially, and I don't mean application, <laughs> no pun intended either, uh, about an actual application. I'm talking about the application in which you use this app to uh, you know, service some need within your organization. This particular need is you want to identify people within your organization digitally and have an app on the device. Uh, we're going to use the Microsoft Power Apps Player for Android or iOS and this will allow you to generate this digital ID on screen and simply you'll just use it at various checkpoints. Now, one of the things I'm going to be using in today's demo is this little handheld device. You can get this on Amazon between 40, I paid $49, so between $49 and I think on the high end is like $57.58. That's as of the date of this recording. Obviously, inflation's through the roof, so it might be $150 in two weeks. Uh, so in any event, um, the really cool thing about this is that you have a multitude of different ways to use this on every single device that you own, assuming... Uh, that you have the ability to have these ports on the device. So basically, I'll disclaim any modern device you'll be able to use this on. So you've got Bluetooth connectivity for your cell phone, Android, iOS, no big deal. Also, there's a little USB dongle, like a HID. So if those of you that have a Logitech mouse, you might have seen these little USB chips that you use to plug into your computer to connect your mouse and keyboard. It has something similar to that. That's the middle 2.5. 4 gigahertz wireless ID and then there's a USB cable that you do use for charging so you can actually have it wired in now if you are in Bluetooth or wireless mode you can go up to um, basically 32 feet away from the device so this is pretty flexible in, in how you might be able to use it now the other way that I see you using this now I'm not going to show or demo this here on the the demo today but I want you to think about maybe trade shows or events or things of that nature right you can do NFC chips you can do QR our codes you can do a multitude of different things and so you know when people go to register or check in you can simply use this device to scan the QR code on their badge that you might print out or whatever the case may be and you'll be able to log checkpoint access all along uh, you know say the floor or the attendance if you got breakout sessions or breakout rooms to see who actually showed up to what and then be able to give that to any of the vendors or sponsors that's there anyway the sky is the limit if you guys need help with any of that kind of stuff or ideas just shoot me some comments in the comment box below I'll be more than happy to try to help you figure some things out with regards to that or maybe an application on how you could use this further. Today we're only focusing on Azure Active Directory and so on the application on start which is what you're seeing here on screen let's go to not on hidden let's do application first if we get the right thing and what I'm doing I'm setting a global variable and here I'm just calling it VID and I prefix all my variables with a lowercase v and what I'm doing is I'm using the single and only connector in here which is the office 365 users and so I'm running that against search users using the second version 2 of this and what I'm doing is for the search term I'm simply passing in the email of the currently logged in user so the user that opens up the app their email is going to get passed along into this office 365 65 users and essentially what's going to happen is I'm going to populate this VID uh, which essentially is going to be a table or a collection let's see what it winds up being here it says table one row okay so that being said then I'm generating this QR code dynamically and so one of the things I'm doing here is I'm encoding I'm using the first function or I'm using the encode URL just in case there's any spaces or funky things or characters in here and I want to make sure that that's encoded so it's web friendly and then I'm saying give me the first record it's a table over here you can see it only has one row anyway but it doesn't know that there's one row it just sees that it's a table so if I don't say first I'm not going to get the first one you could also use index as well as opposed to first it's a personal preference on how you decide to code it and then what I'm doing is I'm bringing back the employee ID which is a GUID and so I'm tacking on the GUID in, into this URL so let's go over here to this URL and digress and show you what this looks like and so it's a very simple website and so what you do is you choose the type of code that you want and then this is a test right and so that is the link I'll go ahead and clip clip out the link 
And so we can see that the code changed. Now I'm going to replace this URL and I'm just going to pop it in so that you see. You see how this is encoded? The spaces are percent 20, is space 20, a space 20. So it's encoded that space. And so that's why I, in the Power App, I use the encode function for the same thing. And so it's a GUID. You don't really need to encode it in this way, but just as best practice, just in case you wanted to use it, it's always good to encode these types of things. That way, if something changes for whatever reason, it's very portable and you'll be good to go. But the point is, um, all you need to do is just use this URL and then tack on the text at the end and you get a unique URL code. Now, how you use this, you just come over here, insert, you come over here under, um, well, I got populars here, but basically it's under media and then you just pop in an image and then for the uh, image property, you just remove the sample image and then you pop in that URL and concatenate it with the GUID and it generates that uh, QR code for you on the fly. So pretty cool and pretty straightforward. So let's take a look at this actually in action and I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna use this device. So you'll hear it chirp a couple of times. So let me go ahead and minimize this. So here I have two working copies of this app. I've got it in uh, mobile mode. We're looking at the iPhone XR layout for this. And I'm gonna go ahead and click on the logo, which will take you to the second screen. Now notice I clicked one time and the cursor is already in the box. Now you're gonna hear a series of chirps. That's that next to device that I showed you earlier. So the first one is the sound of it turning on. Now the Bluetooth just connected. So there's a series of two chirps. So you want to hear that chirp twice. And so anyway, at that point, I'm just going to go into the QR code and try to scan it. And boom, that's done. And as soon as I do that, I'm programming the application on change event. And so the application on change event, what it does is it goes out and it takes the GUID and it goes against, again, Office 365 users, passes in the GUID, finds out who it is, and then brings back the details and the property or the information. Now, what is interesting, I'm going to go ahead and click this uh, little refresh button, and I'm going to, I have a, a, a drink here, and I'm going to scan the, the ID on the back of the drink, and I'm going to show you what happens when you scan an, an illegal or a non-identified employee. So there we go. I, it said employee not found. It doesn't know who it is, and I would hope not because uh, who wants to have a drink as a colleague, right? So <laughs> in any event, um, that's as simple as it gets for right now, but you could see the, the application of use on this. Now, you could write information to SharePoint. You could write information to Dataverse. You could integrate with a plethora of other things. So creativity and the sky's the limit. This is a relatively short video for me, but I just wanted to kind of get the creative juices flowing with you guys and show you all of the different really cool, cool ways that you can use Power Apps with innovative media such as QR codes and NFCs and all of this wonderful stuff that's out there to take advantage of every possible um, uh, item that you have out there. Now, as of the date of this recording, real quick before we go, I want to disclaim that those of you that are using iOS, unfortunately, I don't know why. Well, I do know why. Apple's just really been a bear to work with from day one. But in any event, Android's always been way more forgiving. Some can say it's less secure. You know, I don't want to get into the argument here nor there. But from my standpoint, trying to write something to make it work um, has always been a challenge personally for me because uh, some things don't work. Anyway, what I'm saying is, is that when you run this in an application on the device inside of the uh, the the what is it called, the, the player, I guess, for Android or iOS. When you click on this scan ID, well, first it complains that it, it needs to make sure that it's on an actual real mobile device, and this is not. For some reason, this was broken as of my testing on my wife's iPhone. It works perfectly fine on all my Androids, but I guess maybe it's her version of iOS. So if you are using iOS and you click the scan ID and you get a black window, unfortunately, it's, it's a bug with the, either the iOS or the app, the Microsoft app on iOS. Go ahead and raise a support ticket. I'm sure they already are know and are aware of it, but in any event, just wanted to let you know that for those of you that use iPhones, you may have some issues as of the date of this recording. Hopefully they fix it quick, but otherwise, other than that, that's it again. We'll see you in the next video. Have a good one. Thanks.